Thank my colleague, Senator Scott, for offering this, and all of our colleagues who joined the Senate, and of course all the senators who voted for it um, unanimously. Uh, my colleague from Florida has already mentioned the, the three names of, of those in the service of our country who, who lost their lives in Pensacola, and I'll talk about them more in a moment. I, I do want to say a couple things. The first is Pensacola really is one of the hidden gems uh, of the state that, that Senator Scott and I represent. And to understand Pensacola, to understand that it's not just a city in which a naval facility is located, the Navy is very much a part of the fiber of that community. I would almost equate it to a college town's relationship with a university. Uh, that's how much of its identity this, this naval air station is. And so this attack wasn't just, attack, wasn't just an attack on this facility, but it was an attack on, on the heart and soul of, of Pensacola as a community. And as I had an opportunity to visit the, in the aftermath of the attack, I was deeply not just saddened by the loss of life, but impacted, number one, by sort of the way the community responded, and second, by some of the stories that I hope we'll learn more about as the information comes out of extraordinary bravery, not just the first responders, but, but others who happened to be there at that time who exhibited extraordinary stories of heroism in the face of evil in this terror attack, with people who rushed into the building that gunshots were coming from instead of run away, as most people would do. I, I'd point out some of the things, you know, Ensign Watson that was mentioned earlier, Caleb Watson, he happened to be the officer on deck at the time of the shooting, and, and he ran towards the shooting. He was yelling for people to get out of the way. He, he actually proceeded to tackle the killer here and, and fought him in an attempt to disarm him, all while being shot at least five separate times. He was very wounded, but he nevertheless happened to make his way out, flag four first responders, and be able to give an accurate description of the shooter that ultimately allowed him to be neutralized. Uh, Airman uh, Hotme, Hotham, uh, Mohammed Sami Hotham, his family moved to St. Petersburg from New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina, as was already mentioned, his, his school assistant principal called him, quote, the perfect one because he was a good student, a track star, and a basketball player. Uh, this is a quote from the assistant principal. He would walk into any room and it would light up. He had this magnetic personality, big smile, always happy, and people would always gravitate towards him. And uh, his commanding officer told his father that it was his son, Muhammad, who had also bravely attempted to take down the gunman and lost his life. And then there's uh, Cameron Walters of Georgia. Uh, who's described as an amazing guy, always had something good to say to everybody, and was always smiling. You know, the morning of the shooting, uh, Airman Walters was randomly assigned to watch duty in that building, Building 633. He had only been in station in Pensacola for two weeks before this attack. So, again, I want to thank Senator Scott, my colleague from Florida, for offering this, because it ensures that not only will we not forget the heroes who sacrificed their lives, protecting their fellow Navy members as this tragedy unfolded. But it also reminds us of the obligation that we have to get to the bottom of how this happened, why this happened, so that it may never, ever happen anywhere again. With that, I, I yield the floor.